Hey everyone, I'm going to do a little sketchbook review and I'm going to take the sketchbook I've been using and I ordered four new ones. They're from Blick.com. I'm going to link them below in case you are interested in trying one of these yourself. And we're going to just open them up and play, see what the paper's like, paint on them a little bit. And I wanted to let you know that I have a new free download that includes something about sketchbooks also, but it's 24 tips for acrylic painters. And I think I'm going to talk to you a little bit about sketchbooks and elaborate on the tip that I give in that free download about using your sketchbooks when you feel like you don't want to waste your supplies or you're a little bit um, you're trying to go for a more thrifty type situation <laughs> which I've done in the past a lot and sketchbooks are a great way for you to practice and not feel like you are using very expensive materials like big canvases or whatever so let's get into these and get started so I'm going to start with this sketchbook and it is an artist's loft book so that means that it is a Michaels brand and I don't know the size of the paper the well I know I can measure how big the paper is but I mean as thickness goes I took the tag off so I don't know what the paper thickness is but for this one it's worked pretty well I mean this is acrylic paint and while it does seem to buckle a little bit, you can see the back, the back of this page where I used, well, I used paint and I used some gel medium or um, actually it was liquid matte, liquid medium, but a fluid medium, but it did buckle a little bit for that. But um, other than that, this is not a bad sketchbook. And I don't remember how much it was, but it's a hardback and it opens up flat. I mean, you can paint on both sides like I did right here. Make one big spread if you wanted to. So that's a plus on this one. But that's the only one that I've really tried that was bound like this. So I used to use the spiral bound mixed media notebooks all the time but i liked the idea of being able to open it up and you know paint on all of it at one time so i thought i would just buy a few different kinds of sketchbooks different brands and they all came from blick and i'm gonna link them below and we're just gonna play with these and see what happens so we're gonna start with this one first and it is uh a Steelman and Burn. And it looks like it's not it's a soft cover. Feels kind of leathery like. And it looks like the paper is very, very thick. This paper is much thicker than the pink book that I just sketchbook, the artist loft one that I just showed you. And it will open up all the way like this so that's a plus you can use these little clips kind of hold it down when you're painting but we're gonna do a, just we're just gonna do a little test in here and see what happens Let's see it's my dirty water let's grab I'm just gonna grab some yellow and just paint in here and see what happens. I'm liking the smoothness of this paper. And like I said, it's really thick. It's not going through. I'm just going to put down some some thick strokes there and we'll let that dry and we'll come back to this one so this one is 
It says Alpha Series Premium Sketchbook Mixed Media Paper. So it's supposed to be good for any kind of media. All right, we're just gonna pull this up and go to the next one. This one is, it says sketch paper. So I'm not sure, 60 pound paper. Um, this one was 150 grams. Well, that's not what I was looking for. Medium grain. They have different, they ha also have ivory and toned paper in this brand, the Mixed Media Series. So I am, I'm going to say the 150 is probably the weight of the paper. But as far as grams, okay, wait, here we go. 89 grams here, 150 here. So the first one that we looked at, the paper is definitely thicker. And I'll take this off. The cover on this one is really soft and leathery. So that feels good. Let's see how well it doesn't open up flat like I want it to. So this one's got that one, a strike against it. See, it's, it's not bound so that it flattens as much as I would like for it to. But I believe it's, it's meant mostly for sketching is what I believe. Sorry, my camera's moving around a little. So let's do a little test on this paper. This feels more like drawing paper where uh, it's not thick at all. And so this is probably, yeah, see it's starting to go through actually. So if I put very much water on that, it's already starting to buckle. So we'll put this one aside and move to our next one. This one is it says media won't bleed through pages so we'll see about that no show through paper this is render and um let's see what paper is 110 pound paper on this one okay so this one also has that leathery soft cover that is some nice thick paper for sure and it is white are they all white yeah I guess they all look pretty white however this one's not opening up flat either there's definitely that's not working out too well I mean I don't know if I could bend it and make it work better but it's definitely not opening up flat like I would like for it to. But if I'm just doing one thing at a time, then that won't really matter. But I can already tell this paper is definitely thick. And I'm going to water my paint down even more for this one and see what happens. Yeah, that doesn't go through at all. So that's a definite plus. Um, let me get some thicker swatching on here. Okay, so this one is the render sketchbook. And it says that it lays flat. It says pages lay flat, but I'm having a hard time getting it to do that. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. So maybe I just need to be a little more forceful with it. But the binding back here is soft. And I think that if I worked with it enough and pulled and pushed and <laughs> flattened like this, that could work. Yeah. It's just, but it's still a little bit 
more of a hump there than what I thought I was gonna get from this one. Okay, so let's see about the fourth one. It has these other ones dry. This one's Canson. It's called Art Book 180. It's got 65 pound paper, so that's not too thick. But let's see how it, okay, see this? This is what I mean by laying flat. There's not a big hump there. That works really well. And this is a hardback sketchbook also. But the paper is not as thick, I will say that. You can tell already that it's, it's not as thick as I would probably like for it to be. But we're gonna test it and see what happens. And then we're gonna go back through and look at all these and see which one did I like the best. Hang on. It's thundering outside and my lighting is getting a little bit bad in here. <clears throat> I need a drink of tea. Okay. So this little clasp thing is neat too. I like that. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Let's just see what happens here. Let's water it down. And we'll put some on thick. And then we'll, that's already starting to buckle. But I do like how flat this lays. I can really make these pages, you know, one big, one big painting if I wanted to. So, oh, can y'all hear that thunder? Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Um, let's go back start with the first one that we had which was this one and it said it was a mixed media sketchbook some of it's dry some of it's not it does seem thicker and this paper is definitely better quality in my opinion this one is a smaller five and a half by eight and a half inch little book and it does lay flat so I like this one, I really do. Okay, the next one here, this one is, it said that it's a sketchbook. I, I believe that it is definitely more for drawing than painting. And let me see, which one was this? I think this was the, yeah, Strathmore sketch paper. And it's only 60 pound paper. So it feels almost like printer paper. It's really thin. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to get another one of these. I don't believe. Okay. Then we had this one that was called render and it's supposed to lay flat. That was kind of what the purpose of this one was, but I was having a little trouble getting it to lay flat. However, that is some really good paper and it is not nothing is going through that at all and the paper is not even buckling at all so i'm gonna say yes to this one also and then we've got this one which is 65 pound paper feels a little thicker than the strathmore sketchbook but can see all this can you see all that that's just from a little bit of paint and I don't believe that it's going to work out as well as I hope because this one is really good it's really flat so oops it's okay then we have the one that I started with that came from this one came from Michaels and I don't know the thickness of the paper. It feels, it's definitely more than this one. 
is probably about 100, maybe 95 pound, but it also, it also buckles a little bit, but it does lay out flat. So, I'm going to say that my favorite of these is this one. It's mixed media. So, um, you could use this with paint, with ink. It says dry media, light wash ink. And it's, a, it's just a really good quality, in my opinion. And I will give you guys links down below for all of these different options. If there's one that you think would work better for you than the other, then jump in there and grab it. And I'm gonna go back to this one. Let's, let's paint in this one. And I'm gonna do a little, that already looks like a lemon. So let's just paint a little lemon or two. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about sketchbooks just in general because sketchbooks can be awesome. Okay. Okay, we're gonna use this smaller sketchbook and we're gonna paint some lemons. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about sketchbooks. So, when I first began painting, I didn't have a lot of, of a budget for my supplies. And a lot of times I would just kind of do the best that I could with what I had. I don't know if I can talk and paint at the same time. <laughs> Hang on. So I would just do what I could with what I had and I would use the money that I made from anything that I might have sold to go and buy more supplies. And that thriftiness in my mind kind of made me I don't know, afraid to use my supplies very much. And so I didn't practice as much as I should have. I would get out a canvas and think that I had to make something that was perfect. And um, a lot of times there was a lot of pressure for me to make something that I thought I could sell. And that just didn't always, it's, it's just not feasible to think that way. So. I began playing around with just papers more than anything and some some sketchbooks and like I said at the beginning of this video I used those sketchbooks that had the the wire binding you know the spiral wires and that was fine I was able to use those and get some some good use out of them but I just, I don't know why it took me so long, but I just recently started using these sketchbooks that can lay flat like this and trying different things like that. And so like just for this example, I'm using a smaller book, but I've turned it this way and I can make a painting like this and still have plenty of room. But the reason why I started using the sketch, sketchbooks was because I felt like I could save money by doing it this way, by using a sketchbook instead of using a canvas. And I did not feel the pressure to make something that I thought I had to sell. And so it allowed me, it gave, I kind of gave myself permission to play with my supplies because I didn't feel like I was wasting it or wasting money or anything like that. But it took me a while to get to that point. And I think that I, it kind of held me back because I could have practiced and played and made artwork that was 
different and fun because I didn't have that pressure and expectation to make something that I had to sell because it was on a canvas. So I just thought that was something that might help someone else if you are you're working on with a budget and you don't really have a lot of extra money to spend on supplies and things like that. And I just made four lemons. I never do things in let's do another one. Anyway, if you don't have extra money to spend and you don't feel like you're allowing yourself or you're giving yourself permission to just play with your supplies, then I would highly recommend that you get a sketchbook. And even if you can't order the ones that you think are the best ones or whatever, it's still gonna be, no matter what kind you get, it's gonna be better than a canvas. Because each one of these that I showed you that I did the re these reviews for, each one of these was $20, around $20. So, let me see, how many pages are in this one? Does it tell me how many pages? I'd have to count all of them, which I'm not gonna do. That would be very boring. Oh, 46. 46 pages, is that right? In this one, there are 64 pages. So for $20, you could do 64 paintings and you could do it without feeling like it's gotta be a masterpiece. Because number one, you are not gonna sell things that you got in your sketchbook. And number two, you're just gonna be feel freer. You're gonna feel like you can play and not do this with the idea that it's gotta be perfect because that's how you learn, that's how you get better, that's what you should do if you want to, to move forward and make better artwork. You gotta practice. But if you don't allow yourself the supplies or the time or whatever it may be, you're not gonna get any better. So that's just one of my 24 tips that you can you can get the download is free. I'm going to put the link below and you can grab that. If you think you need a few more little tips or hints. I'm going to switch to my palette knife. See what I can do here. So this paper is really holding up well with all these, all these layers so far. Another thing that I used to do was think that I was wasting my time. Like something like this, I would think there's no point in doing that if I'm not going to be able to sell it. And that is, that's a limited mindset. That's just not, it's not true. What I end up doing, I know I'm talking funny, but I... <laughs> I'm having trouble painting and talking at the same time. What ends up happening, at least for me, is I get an idea and I may put it in a sketchbook and then I'll come back and paint that idea on a canvas and the second time that I paint it, it is almost always better. 
So it's like the first time was a practice run. You're just getting an idea down and then you can use your sketchbook to do that without, without the fear, I guess, of messing up because it doesn't matter. It's your sketchbook. And then you can go back and recreate it. If it turns out well, go back and recreate it on a canvas. And you could make it bigger or make it smaller, make a whole series of paintings from your ideas in your sketchbook. And you also, if you are a teacher like me, you're going to need an outlet that's just for you. Because as much as I love teaching, sometimes I just want to paint something just because I want to paint it and not because I feel like I need to make a lesson about it or somebody ask me how to paint something. Sometimes you're just going to need to paint just because you want to. And your sketchbook is a great place to allow yourself to do that. Of course, you've got to allow yourself time. Sometimes that is a little bit hard. But once you begin practicing things and you realize how beneficial it is, then you're gonna prioritize it. And at least for me, it's, it's therapeutic just Painting just because you want to paint without any expectations and realizing it doesn't matter what it looks like and it doesn't matter if it's something that would be sellable. Those kinds of things just kind of, they'll, they'll stifle your creativity. If you are putting too much pressure on yourself and see what it looks like if I put some flowers in here. If you're putting too much pressure on yourself, then your creative flow is going to slow down. That is 100% true. Let's do one more little flower, maybe something. Hmm, right up here. And let's check the back without messing it up. Yeah, that worked really well. That's a lot of paint on there. It's buckling a little bit right here, but that one, that one lemon has a ton of paint on it. So, I really do like these. This one right here is my favorite of the four or five because I, I'm gonna take the one from Michaels into consideration too, but this one's definitely the winner as far as the paper and the flatness. The size is not bad either because I could take this with me somewhere if I wanted to, to paint somewhere else other than my studio, which I don't normally do, but it's definitely a possibility. So I hope this encouraged you, gave you some ideas, and maybe you'll go and grab your own sketchbook and start playing with your paint. See you next time. Bye.